For those of you that don't know me, my name is uh, Lynn McClatchick. I am a transportation planner and engineer with HDR, and I'm based out of Calgary. Uh, I've got experience in uh, a variety of transportation planning projects, including um, long-range transportation planning and good movement studies, corridor studies, TIAs, parking and loading studies, and active transportation planning. Today, I'll be presenting um, our recently completed Okanagan Gateway transportation study that we did in the city of Kelowna. So first an introduction to the project. Um, the study was a joint led long-term planning study and it was for an area known as the Gateway, which is at the north end of Kelowna uh, within the red circle here. The study partners were the BC Ministry of Transportation and Infrastructure, the city of Kelowna, Kelowna International Airport and the University of British Columbia. So for those of you that aren't familiar, with Kelowna, the city of Kelowna kind of stretches like this along the valley and along Highway 97, which runs east-west through downtown Kelowna here and transitions to go north-south through the study area. Um, and then you have Okanagan Lake on the left. So the purpose of this study was to um, identify and define the existing and future um, transportation problems within the gateway and come up with um, a network improvement strategy to uh, remedy those existing and future problems. And so in, in developing our study, um, there were a number of data gaps where we needed to fill and included in those were travel trends um, beyond existing you know, intersection traffic counts and uh, link traffic counts. We were also interested in mode share data for the area and active transportation data. And we were interested in understanding what travel generally was like within the gateway. Um, there was a perception that there was a high rate of internal trips within the gateway, just because some of the major regional destinations, such as the university and airport, and we were interested in uh, exploring those and validating those through our study. And uh, that's where Streetlight came in. Our team knew about it and were interested in trying it out with this project. It was the first time that we used it. And so we worked with the Streetlight team and our own project team and the city of Kelowna and other stakeholders. Uh, to come up with a 10 zone study area. Um, so the zones are origin destinations and we have them shown here. Um, they're essentially made of conglomerated traffic zones from the regional transportation model. And you'll see two different types. There's bigger zone blobs and those are areas. And there's also screen line zones that capture all trips that cross the, the screen line. And so this was our basic uh, zone structure. You'll see we have six zones up here in the gateway area. And then we had four zones um, outside of the gateway area, which were essentially external zones from our study area. Zooming in, here are the six zones that we assigned within the gateway. Quail Ridge and University South were uh, residential areas on the west side of the study area. Here's UBCO in orange. Here's the airport terminal and parking zone, and then some surrounding airport industrial areas on uh, the other side of Highway 97. So, when we started the project, we developed an outline of how we were going to use um, the data in the interface. And we decided that the, there were two primary different purposes that we had for the streetlight data. Um, one was the origin destination data and matrices, um, which we used to understand the current travel trends in the gateway and also to calibrate the travel demand model that we were using for the project. For this project, we used the regional travel demand model um, and a subset of it, and we used the data from Streetlight to calibrate that. Um, but we also used the Streetlight platform and the information on there, um, including the visuals and the graphics to get a good understanding of, of what trips were like in the gateway um, without having to crunch uh, many numbers. And that includes uh, data like trip length data, which was uh, readily available and easily understood. So here's a screenshot of what the Streetlight interface looked like online. Um, this is a sample for six zones within the gateway, so effectively internal trips within the gateway. Um, you can see the heat map on the right shows which locations have the highest uh, number of trip ends. There's also a chart on the left that shows percentages. And there's a number of pie charts on the bottom that show uh, more detailed information, such as traffic trip duration, so how long uh, trips take, categorized into 10-minute bins. Uh, then there's trip lengths, trip speeds and trip circuity. We were also able to easily expand that into the 10 zones that we had selected and got the same results, or same, I guess, indicators, but with different results, obviously. 
And this, what this interface allowed us to do was easily compare internal trips versus all trips to the gateway, which is represented by our six zone analysis up here and 10 zone analysis down here. Now you can, uh, easily, you might not be able to read the numbers from here, but I can explain them. So this is the 10 minute bin of total trip duration, and this is the 10 to 20 minute bin. So what we're able, easily able to see here is that, you know, the majority of internal trips within the gateway are less than 20 minutes. Whereas if you look within all of Kelowna, you know, trip lengths are longer, um, trip distances are longer, and trip speeds are also higher. So the interface enabled us to easily understand this and get a sense of what travel was like within the gateway compared to overall trips in the city of Kelowna. So here's a, a summary of some of the key findings that we found through investigating the data on the streetlight interface. Uh, one was that 5% of captured trips within the 10 zones that we analyzed had a tripped end within the gateway. So, uh, you know, that's one in 20 trips in the city of Kelowna begin or end within the gateway. 25% of all trips with an end in the gateway were internal. That means that 75% of trips to and from the gateway were external trips. Nearly half of all trips to the gateway were less than eight kilometers long or 20 minutes. Now, those of you who are active transportation and transit planners know that those values are definitely within the range um, where there's those trips could be accommodated by, by cycling and transit. Uh, we also found out that the airport made up 7% of all trip ends within the gateway, but only 3% of internal trips. So this identified that the airport wasn't in fact a major destination within the gateway for internal trips, but it was more important from a regional context um, which isn't necessarily surprising because, um, you know, there's only one major airport in the region. So um, it makes sense that the majority of trips come from outside of the gateway to the airport. And finally, UBCO Okanagan constituted um, nearly half of the trip ends in the gateway at 47%. So we knew that that, that was going to be an important consideration in our study moving forward. The other part of our study, in addition to um, analyzing you know, traffic and travel trends was identifying um, existing and future problems. And this is a really high level summary of what we identified. One was uh, highway access to the Kelowna International Airport. There's only two accesses to the airport, one here and one up here, and really only one major one at Airport Way. Um, it currently experiences congestion and queuing issues, and those are just gonna be exacerbated in the future as traffic grows without improvements. Um, another one of the problem areas that we identified was access to uh, UBCO. There's a number of vehicle access points, but their capacities are limited, and we flag that as a, a future issue. And then also at, down here, um, Sexsmith Road is the southern boundary of the study area. And in the past, it's experienced um, you know, high collision rates and congestion. Um, the ministry did make some improvements along Highway 97 recently, but it was uncertain in our study how, how much those had changed. So we flagged that as a as a problem area. And then the last problem area that we identified or overall problem, problem area was internal gateway travel. Um, as you can see here, the, the number of road connections and active transportation connections are you know, somewhat sparse and that's due to the geography and you know, the, the physical characteristics. So in some cases, there's not roads and active transportation connections linking all of the major locations and that can lead to the circuitous trips that we uh, observed from the streetlight index. So considering the travel trends and these identified problems, um, this led us towards uh, what we called a, a TDM first approach. So instead of simply modeling the future characteristics um, and then addressing them with traffic uh, capacity improvements, our approach instead was to try to change future vehicle trips to active transportation and transit trips knowing though that that's typically more cost-effective method. And we used Streetlight to help us progress with that approach. So one of the analyses that we did um, using the Streetlight data was what I've termed the, the low-hanging fruit analysis. What you see left here is uh, two trip ends, so an origin destination. And then the second column is the percentage of trips out of all trips that were captured in Streetlight for a typical weekday. And then the approximate, approximate distance of that trip and then using a factor of these two uh, multiplying together, we were able to get what we've called the, the mode shift potential. And what this essentially identifies is just areas that are close together with a high amount of trips. So using this, we were able to identify, I guess, the areas that would have the best bang for our buck in terms of improving active transportation and transit connections and getting the highest 
amount of mode shift within the gateway as a result. Some of the findings from this analysis were that UBCO was listed as one of the trip ends for four out of the top 10 low hanging trips. And uh, the airport was only listed once and that was the airport industrial park. So this really helped us focus our efforts on um, identifying where we needed the most improvements um, in the gateway. So from that approach, uh, we ended up recommending a number of, of TDM improvements that included um, recommending increases to transit service to the airport. There is transit service today, but it's, it's not very frequent. We also recommended um, significantly increasing transit service to UBCO, and that's to accommodate uh, future growth that's uh, projected at the university. Um, but at the same time, the university is not projecting that they'll increase their parking supply very much. And so transit will really have to make up the difference there. We also recommended uh, active transportation connections between UBCO. Uh, right now, there's an informal uh, pathway here connecting this residential area of Quail Ridge and the university. Uh, we recommended formalizing that and improving it. And then we also recommended a shuttle in the gateway uh, to connect some of the, the major destinations. Uh, a number of other minor pedestrian gap fixes where there's currently you know, no sidewalks or pathway. And then we were recommended that um, the university and the airport and other businesses consider employee incentives, um, such as end of trip facilities, programs, things like that to increase the attractiveness of active transportation and transit. So with our proposed TDM strategy, we were able to confidently predict what we believe are reasonable auto mode shares in the future. In this table, you'll see uh, what we believe is the existing mode share in the gateway broken down by area. What we believe the future mode shift in the gateway will be without a TDM strategy. And what we believe is a realistic future mode share with the TDM strategy implemented. Um, you'll see here for UPCO and University in South Quail Ridge, we believe that we can get actually quite a significant mode shift away from auto travel towards transit and active transportation by increasing transit and active transportation connections. Whereas at uh, the airport industrial area and airport terminal, it's still a significant shift. You know, it's almost doubling the non-auto mode shift, but um, just to a lesser extent, realizing um, where the trips are coming and going from. Here's that same data shown another way. You know, today there's 78% uh, auto mode share in the gateway. In the future baseline scenario, we predict that would go down to 72. And with our mode shift strategy, we predict that that would go down to 64 with you know, transit walking and cycling increasing respectively. And finally, here is the same information shown a different way. And this shows the absolute number of trips for uh, both existing and future horizons and then the future horizon with our mode shift strategy. So you can see here on the right that auto trips will definitely still be increasing even with the TDM mode shift scenario, just to a lesser extent with uh, transit cycling and walking making up the difference, uh, mostly transit. And this difference here between the, the business as usual future and the future with our TDM strategy really enables us to postpone some vehicle improvements to later dates and also to reduce the extent of vehicle improvements, um, ultimately likely saving money for the project um, and the city and the province in the end. So following from that, here is the slide that shows our final project recommendations. So we recommended um, that the the final recommendations be implemented in four different phases, phase one being you know, short-term and phase four being long-term. The initial phases focus on access management along the highway. And then the next phases focus on increasing network connections. One of the flagship improvements of this project is uh, this green connection right here. Uh, it is currently a, a northbound left turn uh, off ramp off the highway that provides access to UBCO. However, the, the ramp and bridge is about eight or nine meters wide, definitely wide enough to accommodate two-way travel, although it's just a one-way bridge right now. And so what we propose to do is, is uh, add a second eastbound lane on that bridge, which will enable two-way travel. And then to add this road here that's long been contemplated called the Rutland Connection. And what this does is this in, uh, provides a second major access to the airport from the south, also providing a second connection from the airport uh, to Sexsmith Road here, reducing some traffic volumes on the highway, reducing congestion at this intersection, and effectively providing, I guess, a south-facing somewhat interchange down here, delaying the need for a full in interchange at Airport Way in Highway 97, 
and um, delaying, you know, even the parts of the interest change that will be required so that we can phase in the interchange, providing, you know, benefits in the short term improve in terms of improved access and operations at this intersection without actually improving it. So that's kind of a summary of our, our main um, physical traffic improvement recommendations. And then of course, with the TDM strategy, another one of our main recommendations was increasing transit service um, to UBCO, the airport and uh, the addition of a gateway shuttle. So moving back to Streetlight then, um, what Streetlight enabled us to do on this project was cost-effectively collect origin destination data, which had a number of other complementary metrics um, like Peter was mentioning, such as uh, trip distances, you know, demographic information. And we were able to do that you know, quickly, efficiently, and in a much more cost-effective manner than something like an older data collection uh, method, such as license plate surveys. Streetlight's easy-to-use interface also enabled us to identify low-hanging trips quite early on in the study, which uh, helped direct the study and we weren't waiting for data. We were able to, you know, to move ahead with certain parts of the study quite easily and quickly. And finally, um, the Streetlight interface uh, makes it very easy once you have your zones uploaded to change the date and time of the data that you're looking at. So you can kind of explore different options and travel trends based on what you find as you go with the data.